Ami, could you please uh, switch on your microphone? Good morning, your mic is muted, ma'am. Mic is muted, mic is muted. Excuse me. I mean, in the bottom of the screen, there is one option there with mic symbol. You have to click on that button to unmute oh, okay. your mic. Okay, no, no, okay, no, now, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's covered up. Okay. Hmm. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Dr. Aziz. Good yeah, morning. okay, how are you? Very well, how are you? Yeah, fine, fine. Here, things are going on nicely. Very good. Yeah, and expecting you. <laughs> So, so how uh, sir, without further delay, we can start? Yes. Yes. Let's begin. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. sir just uh, uh, I wanted to welcome you all with the permission of our respected principal, Dr. Asis, sir, and my teacher, Dr. Shibilu, sir. My colleagues are there and most respected and lovely, I mean, uh, so we are actually waiting for your joining. So uh, uh, let me welcome you all to these uh, wonderful lecture series. Actually, this is uh, we jointly organized by the Department of History, Bharti Jaras Boy Chair for Indian Ocean Studies, and also the MK Haji Chair for Migration Studies. The two chairs we had established in the last two uh, last year actually. We had been in this process for long to establish two chairs focusing on the Mapala part two and. Uh, Bakke contribution, Jera's boy contribution, and of course the Ami Kathleen contribution to this field of Mapilla study. And also be curious about the migration aspects of the Kerala. That's uh, that's why we we established two chairs recently in connection with the PSMA College. And I should not miss that point because Dr. Aziz, our respective principal, he was that he is actually the uh, brains brainstorm on this project because while we are sitting in his chamber one day uh, at night he discussed about the establishment of two chairs for this particular purpose so without any delay we established and we got almost all support from the management committee and all the stakeholders of the PSMA college so this is my pleasure to be uh, appointed. I mean, the principal pressure and manager also very much interested to appoint it, our respected Ami Kathleen as the first chair professor of our chair, Bakke Jaras Boy Chair for Indian Studies. So uh, just the moment I had communicated this matter with Ami, she also excited very much. And I know that almost all the time Ami with us, even though she belongs to the California miles away from the Malabar, she always connected to our heart and the PSMA college through all the time. Uh, I mean, the continuous <coughs> process of interaction has been going on with us. So I, on this uh, wonderful gathering, on behalf of this wonderful gathering, I welcome you, Ami, for these, uh, uh, I mean, the second international talk series uh, organized jointly by these three, uh, three organizations. So, uh, our principal is actually the backbone of all these programs. And I know that he is very busy with some other program because our college is going for the second uh, cycle of the NAC visit uh, the, for the next two weeks. And uh, almost all busy is there with principal, but amidst of all these busy principal uh, took some time to meet you, Ami, and all these, uh, our uh, students and research scholars and faculty members, those who are joining with us. And uh, I welcome you, Principal, with all my uh, prestige and privilege. I took this opportunity to welcome you to this gathering. And today is the chair of this session, the uh, uh, chair of uh, MK Haji Chair for <coughs> Migration Studies, my teacher, Dr. Shibinu. And he is also on traveling, and he managed to join with us today. And on behalf of this gathering, I welcome you, Dr. Shibinu, sir. And uh, uh, many of my friends, especially the Mark Arenhar, Scholar, research scholar from University of Pittsburgh, and also the Fahad Ismail, my colleague Raoop sir, uh, Sharavanan sir, and uh, yeah, welcome Mark Arendha, welcome to this gathering. So uh, I I welcome Rashid uh, Selina Miss also some problem is there, uh, there with Selina's internet connection. So I hope she's also can join with us, and I welcome you all for this wonderful gathering. With these few words, I. Over to you, Dr. Shibinu, for presiding over the function.
Yeah, Shivani sir, some voice problem is there. Can I can I go for your help? Uh, Shivani, not clear, Shivani. Can I call principal on behalf of you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Then on behalf of the, the our chair, with the permission of our chair, I request our beloved principal to inaugurate this function. Okay. Good morning, all. Uh, most respected Professor Ami Kadlin, Department of Economics, College, University of California, and Chair Professor Bakke Jarashboy, Chair for Indian Studies of PSMO College, and always a part of PSMO College, a beneficiary of PSMO College, dear Dr. Shibuno, head of the Department of Economics. Dear Hasib, other faculty members in this occasion. I remember the day, 4th January 2018. PSMO College cannot forget that day because that was the first day Professor Rami visited PSMO College. From there, a strong linkage created between Professor Rami and PSMO College. That finally led to the appointment of a chair professor in one new chair established in PSMO College as mentioned by Mr. Hasib. 10th January 2019, again, we got the chance to meet Ami here. Then 22nd January 2020, just before that uh, COVID outbreak, that was the last and final visit here. Then we missed two Januarys, ma'am. 21st January and 22nd January, two Januarys we missed. Then expecting you in 23rd January. Here. Yeah. Okay. We have to, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to meet here. We have to uh, make some serious discourse connected with the research in history Hello? and especially in Nathana Music Hello? I'm not taking much time. Because as I mentioned to me, Hasib, NAC visit happened. NAC is the National Assembly Council visit happened. Yeah, the problem, the problem, but the problem. but uh, they uh, demanded one revisit. We are going for one revisit. We have to make all the arrangements we made during that time. Yeah, that is on next Monday and Tuesday, 10th and 11th of this week. Yeah. All teachers are busy with, yeah, the know, know. Are busy with that activity. I am also very busy. Uh, uh, ah, 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 okay. I'm not taking much time. I ah, okay. welcome yeah, you yeah, once again yeah. as the principal yeah, of this college. Yeah, 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 yeah. With these words, I inaugurate yeah, 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 yeah. seminar in International Lecture Series 2 with Professor Ami Kadlin as the source person. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you very much for your warm and uh, greetings to all you dear students and dear colleagues at PSMO College. It's a great joy to be back with you again. I've missed our interactions, but we will have more now because we have a chair and um, we, we can talk about the, about the goals of that chair and some of our, our plans. Um, but first, you might want to know a little bit more about Arnold Baca and Nazir Ali Jaraz boy. And I would like to try to share my screen. Let's see how that works. Um, there is a photograph of Arnold Baca here. Can you see that? Or have I just no, blocked no. you? Ah, then I have to do something else. I'll go back and push that another button, which is the hand button or the, or the box button. Present now, yes. Uh, well, how do I share my screen? Okay. All right, I'll do that. And then, okay, let's see if I can make this happen this time. Can you see it now, Arnold Baca? No. No, no, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, now it's yeah, coming. Yes, yes. Yes. Now it's coming. Oh, there is Arnold Baca in the field in 1933 in Kerala, recording women of the Manan tribe using a cylinder recorder. That was before he got his Teffy machine, which he used to record in 1938, the, the Mapala song. So I thought you'd like to see him. And a photograph also of his student, colleague, and disciple, mentee, 
Nazir Ali Jarrah's boy, who completed his doctoral dissertation at SOAS under Dr. Baca. Uh, Baca had wanted to go first into Arabic studies, but his advisors advised him that he should choose Sanskrit and go to India because he was very musical and he would have more chance with his music. So that's what led Baca to India. And Nazir was in India too. Nazir was a student at the Dune School when <laughs> Dr. Baca came and gave a concert at his school one day. He remembers that very clearly. But he didn't meet him again until Nazir went to, to London to study with Baca because he knew that Baca was the greatest scholar of Indian music at that time. Let's see if we can go to the next. As a result, Nazir decided to make a, to raise the funding and create the Archive and Research Center for Ethnomusicology at the American Institute of Indian Studies. And I want to play you a brief clip of the about the archive so that you understand something about the way the ARCE works in Gurgaon, near Delhi, and how we're going to start an archive at PSMO College to do something similar. talking
I mean, while playing the video, I think some problem is there from this side. I think this video is going to end within five seconds, right? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, while playing the video, some problems are there here. So I, I mean, it may be because of the internet troubles. So you can continue with your talk. All right, yes. fine. That, uh, yes, I wanted you to see that that is the place where we re we made copies of all of Baca's recordings uh, in 1984 when the archive first started. And that's where the recordings, copies of the recordings are housed. Now the originals are now housed at the British Library in the sound collection. And um, you can see uh, the British Library's sounds. This is what, it, what, what they look like. But the, of course, the Bakker recordings have not all been archived or cleaned up. But here, is, here are many, many of the pages um, that show Bakker's recordings, recorded in 1931. Those were the early ones that he did when he was still staying at Shanti in the Cape and he lived there for almost two years uh, with, with Tagore and, and uh, Baka's wife. So these are mostly Bengali recordings. They have been worked on quite a bit. Now, the British Library has the original recordings and they can improve the recordings from the originals, but it takes a lot of money and time. And I'm sure they're going to need your help when it comes to the Mapla recordings to sort out the Arabi Malayalam, uh, all of the context and the meaning of the recordings. So 94 of Baca's recordings so far, out of 768 <laughs> are the total. And of those, um, that includes the um, about 29 recordings of Mapla in 1938. Now, I wanted to call your attention to some of the speakers that we're going to hopefully have coming. I've, I've invited about 10 speakers, scholars, including um, Jim Sykes and Julia Bile, this wonderful article called Ethnomusicology and the Indian Ocean on the Politics of Area Studies. This is a wonderful subject for us because we have the Indian Ocean um, travelers coming directly from Arabia during the time of the Prophet uh, with bringing the teachings of the Prophet and ever since there has been exchange of music and beyond. So um, this is a, a reading I recommend that you all read. Um, I hope you can, yes, you can access the, the, the PDF online as I did, uh, I hope. Let me know if you have trouble with that. Another reading that I highly recommend that we should all consider is Islam Translated, about literature, conversion, and the Arabic cosmopolis of South and Southeast Asia. And this wonderful book by Ronit Ricci, professor at um, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, she uh, finished her dissertation uh, in the University of Chicago about a medieval Arabic text called The Book of a Thousand Questions that was translated into Tamil and um, um, Malay and Javanese. And so um, this book explains how the teachings came from Arabia through texts like this, all the way through the Indian Ocean. And this will have importance to you as you as you learn more about um, the Makla recording, the Makla songs and how they are transmitted throughout, the, perhaps further throughout the Indian Ocean. So I highly recommend all of us read this book very carefully. The, now the Ronit Ricci, I've also invited her to see if she could come and speak with us. It would be wonderful because she is working on an English translation of the Book of a Thousand Questions, which is a fascinating Discussion between the Prophet Muhammad and a Jewish rabbi during the last years of the Prophet's life, in which the rabbi asks him 1,000 questions. When he reaches the 1,000th question, the Prophet has converted the rabbi to Islam.
Now, um, another item I would like to call your attention to is the British Library Sounds. Oh, these, I've shown you this. These are the, the sounds as opposed to the blog. We have uh, Teffy single items at UCLA that have been cataloged in a way. I don't know if you can see that. Should I do something? I need to push the. Yes, we can see it. You already can see. Okay, good. Ah, uh, there. All right. So you can see these are the these are the um, some of the recordings from Kerala of the 768 of them. They've been cataloged in a certain way. With, with all of the typed information from Barker's catalog. Barker's catalog uh, was typed up during the Zier's time to preserve in writing instead of handwriting. It was typed by Alistair Dick, the Zier's student, and Arnold Barker's student. So we are very grateful for that catalog. And now it's been made into a spreadsheet. And we have access to the recordings to this spreadsheet, but they are not good quality recordings. That's something that we must do as part of our project, which is to create better sound quality recordings from those very scratchy old Tessie recordings. That was a very unusual German machine, never been used in the field before, but Baca did a heroic thing to carry that thing around in a, in a station wagon all over India and Nepal, Ladakh, Leh, Sri Lanka. So this is a magnificent collection from which we are fortunate to have 29 Mapla examples. Because it was a survey of Indian religious music of all communities. That was Baka's purpose. Let's see. Let's see if we can uh, access the this. Ah, can you see this? Can you see the Baka Tefi catalog here? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So you yes. can see the aha. Uh -huh. You can see the Mapla Muslim um, songs recorded in Malabar, beginning with number thirty-seven point two, including uh, stick dances and uh, this catalog of the prophets, the origin of the Mapla kings of Chaur. Names of the Prophet and incidents of his birth in Arabic, etc., etc. These are fascinating items all the way down. There's some Lakadivian songs about the Prophet recorded in Calicut by a blind singer, Sayyid Ismail Bakil, the Kira of Kalpeli. So these are very precious historic recordings that you will be fascinated to study, I'm sure. Finally, marriage song recited by Karuti Abu Bakr, Blessing the Groom, a rowing song, and the bridegroom going to the bride's house, and then we come to the Pullivan song. So these are other, other communities throughout Kerala, Baka was fascinated with Kerala and made a special point to be able to record Maplas in 1938. Another reading I'd like to call your attention to, and I hope that you'll be coming to speak because I made a connection with the uh, with uh, the Institute for Ismaili Studies, uh, who are very interested in, in our work and Alvin Kasim. Kazim Kasim has written this book called Songs of Wisdom and Circles of Dance, the hymns of the Satpant Ismaili in Muslim Saint Pir Shams. Kazim Kasim is at the University, as at uh, Syracuse University now, I think, 
and would be happy to to give a presentation for us to see how the conversions were made through the use of song and dances, circular dances, the garbi, which are still done for celebrations for the Ismaili community. And I want you to know about the uh, oops, tabs. This is called a journal called Performing Islam. This, oh, this is it's published by Intellect Books, a peer reviewed interdisciplinary journal about Islam and performance and their related aesthetics. The journal covers dance, ritual, theater, performing arts, visual arts, and cultures and popular entertainment in Islam influenced societies and their diasporas. That includes the entire Indian Ocean world. So already they've come up to 10, 10 volumes. My article is in the first volume, article on uh, Sidi, uh, songs of uh, mendicancy called pain and transformation. So I hope you'll be able to read that one day. So we must build up these collaborative relationships with the ARCE, the Archives and Research Center for Ethnomusicology in Gurgaon. I'm sure they'll be very interested to know, and I know that they're interested in your work, in this project, and your research that will be able, that you'll be able to learn from the archive how to create your own archive here at PSMO College. Uh, they have workshops, as you saw, so you can participate in those here, while well, there in India, that is, or perhaps online, we'll see. Are there any questions about any of these materials? You know that... Um, Yes, well, uh, one of the reasons that when I first, I'm sorry, I can't play through the recordings today uh, so that you know what they sound like. When I played them first in 2018, the audience was dumbfounded, as you'll see in the newspaper articles that came out. They basically people could not recognize any of the songs. They had changed so much in that amount of time. And that's what got all of you interested in this project of reviving those songs and re-recording the songs. We must do that. Once we get the sound quality better, um, and, and of course, Rauf Ototungal has used the recordings in, in his field work, and so has Muhammad Hasid playing them for members of, of the same community in his village, in Parapanangari, and uh, Raul played them for uh, a singer, an elderly singer, who could recognize the style at that time, but he said things have changed so much that it's almost unrecognizable now. So these are very important historic documents for you students of history to, uh, to study and to perhaps revive and learn from. Not to mention the translations and transcriptions of the lyrics of the songs, which you can do with your current materials as well, um, and archive them now be before they become lost, because it's natural for things to change as time goes on. 
but it's very, very valuable. Somebody is sharing his yes, screen. Yes. yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Who is sharing the screen? To bus. Take on bussy. Ah, that looks like a request to somebody who uh, unknowingly sharing his screen. I request that man to please. I think we're being we're being bombed uh, from outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus on us. Just wait on me. Just let me remove Thank you. that person. Thank you. Yeah, I just removed. I don't know. Somebody from outside India joined with us, and uh, I don't know who is that actually. Outside of India. Just let me remove. Is it? Huh. Yeah, yeah. It's not from our outside, our student side. I'm sorry for that. I removed that guy, and you can please continue. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, so. Um, the next thing to do is to make, do the reading and be prepared for the next speakers who will be coming. I've invited nine speakers already, just in the last two days, and two of them have already accepted. One is Jasmine Melania Graves Esselin, who was my student at the University of Chicago. She completed her dissertation about the CD uh, songs of women and their rituals. And she's now a professor at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Also, uh, Hoop Skipperus has, has agreed to give a presentation. He's an expert on um, applied ethnomusicology. Now, applied, we mean that is a, a branch of applied anthropology, which means using ethnomusicological tools in community and settings that attempt to create social change to uh, benefit communities such as your community to help you archive your materials and to uh, invigorate traditions that appear to be disappearing like, like I did with the Adam Indians with their Siti Malunga, the musical bowl appeared to be disappearing. We had a project about that. You might have seen uh, one of our films called From Africa to India, about the, the Africans who came to India and became the Siddhis. We don't have any Siddhis living in Kerala, but we've, we've invited Nilima J. Chandran, who is a historian and anthropologist who has been studying these Siddhi shrines throughout the, uh, basically the west coast of India, including in Kerala, where they're called Kafirs, shrine to Kafirs. There's no community in Kerala. There are in Karnataka, Hyderabad, Andhra, Mumbai, and Gujarat especially, large group. Mostly Muslims. In, in Gujarat, they're all Muslims. And they're Sufi Muslims. So that's one of the areas I've worked in, uh, one of the communities I've worked with. In two films, and uh, our CD godson is now living in America, working at the University of Grinnell in Iowa. So we, we do apply our research to our social good with the collaboration with, of, our, of our colleagues. 
to design the research, conduct the research, and evaluate the research afterwards. And that's what we're doing with you. We're designing projects, evaluating them as they go along, and hopefully reaping some benefits. Can I tell you some more about Nazir Ali Jaraz boy? He was an Indian. Then he became an Indian British, a British Indian. Actually, he was born in London. So he had a British passport in the beginning. He, he graduated from the Dune School and then went to the United States to study on the first. Can we delete this person? Oh Thank my you. God. Oh my God. Thank you. Um, he studied at the University of Washington and then returned to India, but he couldn't find a job in geography. That was his major at the University of Washington. So he went to London to study with Arnold Baca to continue his music, which he had been playing music since a child, playing on the sitar. So he was a sitarist, a very fine sitarist. Then uh, Arnold Baca, I didn't mention, or did I did mention that he started out first in Arabic, but then switched to Sanskrit. And he was a collaborator with Arnold, with Rabindranath Tagore in this project. This project that we're working on now started with Baca and Tagore, because Baca would record the music performed by the villagers who came to Shanti Niketan. And um, they were, this was something that the, that the Tagore family had been doing for, for a long time, inviting the Santals and the Domes to come and perform just to break down the barriers between the communities and learn about each other. And Baca decided to record those things, film them, and started making films in the 1920s with, with Tagore. With Tagore's blessing, I should say. And they corresponded for many years after that, while Baca was doing his research in India in the 1930s and 40s until the war ended. So these are very unique people whose footsteps you'll be following in of Arnold Mahla, Tabor, and Nazir Ali Jarazboy. Nazir Ali Jarazboy's grandmother made this, uh, this quilt, actually, of different scenes of going on the Hajj in 1932. She made the applique textiles stitch, stitch by stitch. She created recreated her memories. She didn't have a camera, but her daughter had a film camera, and her daughter, my mother-in-law, my amma, made a film of the Hajj in 1932 and edited it with intertitles and had it shown in London, in Europe, and the United States. And the Nizam of Hyderabad requested a copy of it and received this copy. So the the work in film goes back a long time with Nazir's family. So those footsteps I hope you'll also be following in as you document your research, your live performance research. I know many of you are great performers like the seed uh, of, of Maplapata, Opana, the women, wonderful performers of Opana, as I've seen. So this will be your chance to pursue those subjects from a scholarly point of view, from, a, from an academic, knowledgeable point of view, using new methodologies that we'll be learning about from our visiting speakers, such as the applied ethnomethodology approach. Many of the scholars who are coming are, are uh, experts on Indian Ocean subjects, 
such as uh, the, the office of uh, Yes, that's the musicology of Indian Ocean and the Indian Ocean of the politics of area studies. The abstract says this article draws on the recent boom in Indian Ocean studies to build a framework for registering the Indian Ocean in ethnomusicology, which we can do also in history and many other subjects. We show how the human experience is a movement across the Indian Ocean, its paths have conditioned the musical traditions of ports and islands, and we put ethnomusicological writings on places like Zanzibar and Oman into dialogue with those from Mauritius and Singapore. We address how ethnomusicology's area studies paradigm has inhibited musical studies of the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean region. The specter of comparative musicology, that is <laughs> considered to be an old fashioned um, methodology, which she called, they refer to as a specter, that means a bad thing, and the perils of modern Indian Ocean population in light of post-colonial ethno-nationalism. So this, this is the article. Uh, there it is. Okay. The article begins, the Indian Ocean is an interconnected, interconnected arena that has been described as an Afro-Asiatic seascape and an Islamic ocean. It contains the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal and is framed by Madagascar, the Horn of Africa, the Indian subcontinent, the Southeast Asian archipelago, and Australia. It holds a fifth of the world's sea space, and its rim is home to a third of the world's population its rim. On the shores of the Bay of Bengal alone lives an estimated 500 million people. The region also includes numerous islands of historic importance, such as Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Andaman and Nicolau Islands, Mauritius, Madagascar, the Seychelles, La Réunion, Zanzibar, and Socotra, as well as places like the Cocos Islands and Pulau Nias that are less well known globally, but just as significant to their inhabitants. And at the very end of this wonderful article, which you'll enjoy reading, it's beautifully written, by two experts in different areas of the Indian Ocean, one on Malaysia expert and one's an expert in uh, Singapore Tamil culture. And here's the bibliography, which is these references will be very helpful for you. What questions do you have? Mark Aranya. Is that a question? Oh, hello. Hi, Professor. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, really nice to be uh, to see you and to be speaking to you. Um, thank you for that amazing uh, personal background on um, on on uh, Nazir Jarraz boy and uh, your family and on also on Barker because. Um, I did my master's on um, studying some of the Barclay recordings, actually. Uh, oh. So I looked at the, the recordings of, uh, uh, of the Cochin Jews. Oh, good. So I, I did this from the University of Cape Town. Uh, yes. Between, between 2016 and, uh, sorry, between, between uh, 2017 and 2019. And uh, so I, I, right, so uh, sorry, to, to the question. Um, uh, what, uh, it, do you know of, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so curious as to why there don't seem to be uh, so many studies on these recordings. 
because they're just an incredible, priceless archive of a time that, and of a kind that, you know, nobody had ever thought to, to document, I mean, uh, you know, pre-independent India to go into, uh, into sort of the rural areas of India, I mean, just to, to travel everywhere and to do such a thing. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a priceless ethos. So I'm wondering like, what, uh, surely there must be some other study on this or, yes. or were there any others? There are very few. Um, there's one, Carol Tingey did a dissertation on uh, his recordings in, in Nepal, made in Nepal. But I think they were a bit later recordings on his return to India in the 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is surprising that very few people have taken up this historical concept. My dissertation was on Carnatic music, and I used old recordings, but I didn't have that. I didn't know about Bakke's recordings at the time. Uh, they wouldn't have helped with my dissertation exactly, but I did use old recordings to trace variability and change in the in the Carnatic classical tradition. Um, so it is a very interesting subject to see how things can change, how they can be varied, and that is that is accepted and, and, and expected in classical performance. And you should make it different every time it's performed. Uh, and sometimes those variations turn into change over time. And that was what my dissertation was about. So I found it a very fascinating methodology to use. And this is a, sort of a similar uh, kind of effort to be looking at these old recordings and uh, seeing how things have changed. And it's going to be fascinating to see how we can make comparable recordings now that we have Bach's Mopla recordings and ha have learned you know, experts perform the same, quote, the same items, the same partners, the same uh, ballads, other, other partners, for instance, is one that Bach recorded. So, yes, I don't know why there are more people doing it. We made a film about this, of course, the Bach study in 1984. And all that would happen after was that sometimes we would hear a comment when we would give another paper about another aspect because we couldn't jam it all into one book, one video, and, and the monograph that went with it. Some people would say, oh, not another new study. They're like, they were tired of it. But if you ask the people whose music we're talking about, to them, it's their, it's their soul. I mean, it means so much to them to hear the voices of their ancestors for the first time and in almost every case, everyone was thrilled with the voices that they could hear. Sometimes they could recognize themselves. We went to the, the, the uh, Inakshi Temple in, in Madurai and played the recording, and the leader of the bhajans, who was 80 years old, said, that was me. I was leading the group when I was a young boy, and I remember the bhakis. They were tall. They were huge. They were like giants, but they were very gentle. And Dr. Baka took a photograph of me sitting on a stone elephant. So we went through the photographs that summer. Finally, we had access to them in Holland, in a farmhouse where Baka's nephew was keeping the, the, the photographs. We finally came, off, came across a picture of a Brahmin boy sitting on the stone elephant outside the Madre Menachi Temple. So it was true. Things like that, I don't know. They, they're just really thrilling to find. History become, comes alive when you find things like that. And when we can keep doing it, that's the thing. This is like the gift that keeps giving because we'll be able to do this in the future with recordings that we make now, not just the recordings that were made by Baca, but <laughs> if we archive things carefully, we'll be able to keep track and um, give delight to descendants of today's performance. Uh, thank, thanks so much. I have another question. Uh, this is uh, regarding the sort of technical nature of, of, of cleaning up the, the recordings. Um, I visited uh, ART obviously in, uh, you know, at, at, the, at the start of my of my um, research, and um, I know that they that they have been transferred from one format to another, and now so there are we have the, the original tape 
you have the, I mean, uh, well, you have some paper use there, and you know, and then some of them have been uh, transferred to cassette tape, and then then some of them are digitized. Right. Um, and I think in also like making a copy of your copy, you kind of maybe there's there's probably some some degradation in in, in the quality, and I'm just wondering, uh, what do you have any idea of, like what the process is to clean up those recordings because i think now we have access to technology that can perhaps do that a lot better than than, than before oh yes uh, but and the original material would have needed uh, some I, I i'm not sure like, how that works yes well the british library is doing a wonderful job on the on the on the pieces that they have worked on they've made them sound wonderfully and you'll be able to i think you'll be able to listen to them online if you go to the british library sounds uh you hear the bengali recordings i didn't play any now but, but they sound very very good because they have cleaned them up it just takes very good i you must have technicians in kerala who could do this because of the film industry you know uh i don't know if they'd be interested but that that's the thing get people who are interested in the work but um it, it must be a a profession for some people by now to, to, to renovate old recordings, uh, to restore recordings, to restore even 78 RPM records. That in itself is an art, you know, a, a tech, technical skill that has a lot of possibilities. You can make some, things sound magnificent. But uh, that is an important step that has to be gone through. They haven't done that at ARCE. What they have are, are copies of the copies. Azir had all of the Tefi recordings transferred in London before he left so that he could have copies given to UCLA and and reel-to-reel -reel copies. When we traveled throughout India, we took cassette copies of the reel-to-reel, -reel, so that's another generation. So it keeps degrading. And uh, even if they're digitized, if they're not digitized from clean copies, they'll still have all of the all of the noise of the, of the degraded copies. Which you know, magnetic tape doesn't last. I mean, you can get print through, and all kinds of things happen to it. it, it just, you cannot preserve it easily. Once it's digitized, it's easier, but it's a it's it's still a process where things have to constantly be migrated from one medium to another, otherwise you have degradation in the sound. Uh, thanks so much. I, I have I have a, a bunch more questions, but maybe <laughs> maybe I can I can contact you uh, separately for that. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I should acknowledge your presence over here. Because uh, uh, Mark Aaron have visited our Bandhira School Chair for Minotian Studies almost last month, and I expect his uh, in-person talk for the next week to our students. Ah, where is yeah. Davina? She was there for a second. So, she wanted to ask. I'm sorry. Uh, did Fabina, you had a question and you vanished. Did you have a question? Fabina? Fabina? It's in the chat box. Where, oh, where's that? I'm sorry. Oh, down here? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, um, no, you should have to go to the other one. But there's a message icon. Uh, yeah. that. I'm sorry, I've never used this program before. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. I can, basically, I can my read it for Fabina? Well, okay, my question go, go was, how did you become interested in Matla Pattu and the Malabar community? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Because, well, my husband is a Muslim, and uh, we weren't able to access any of the Matla singers on our first trip, the 1984 trip. Uh, or very few, anyway. So they are in the, they are in the Bakari study uh, at the at the Pulangod estate. They were singing... Uh, Open a uh from a film song, actually. And, um, so we returned to, in 1991 after we completed the, the, the first film. 
and met as many Maplas as we could at that time. Uh, those recordings still haven't been archived at UCLA, but we're in the process of archiving the 1984 recordings, and they will be accessible online very soon in 2023. All the photographs are almost ready from 1984, but the photographs from 1991 haven't been digitized yet, so I don't know what we're going to do. The photographs are always the last, but I have them here, that's all I can say. And, uh, Needs someone to work on them. It's, uh, we don't have any students. We have one student from Kerala now. And he, he started working at the ARCE briefly to help with the Malayalam. But then he, he wasn't accepted to UCLA as a, as a graduate student, so he's here now. But he, uh, you know, he's a he's a Syrian Christian, and so he's very familiar with that entire repertoire in that world. And Baca did record that, that community as well. So you'll have to get yourself a job at the ARCE offer somehow. And I, you know, I, all of these things cost money to, but we have to have, we have to get it done. It's, it's essential. Yeah. If you have any ideas about Going to Delhi or to Gurgaon, it's a long way to go and a hard place to live, I guess. But that's the way to start. Get started with writing to ARCE and tell them that you want to help with the Mapla recordings. I've written to them, and uh, I've written to the British Library about it too, if you get any response. Uh, I wrote to the ARCE and they got a Malayalis person, but not a Mopla, so it's different. So you better speak up and take charge of your materials. I'm glad you're starting an archive. Yes, Amy. Yes. Yes, Amy, we have to do that work on behalf of our chair. Okay, so we have to keep in touch with Subha Chaudhary, and we will offer yes. definitely all help, possible help, uh, on behalf of our chair, in order to uh, transcribe that Mapla songs and to re-record that songs more clearly. So I promise you, we will provide all help on behalf of our chair. Thanks. Any more Any questions? questions from? Box. I still don't know how to find a chat box. Um, what about, can, can anybody speak up? Just speak up if you have a question. The microphones are off. So, uh, so let me tell you a small story. Why these session is too much important, okay? This is for my first year student and the first year a postgraduate student, I'm telling this story because you know how how rarest of this material these uh, because I am also doing research in the Mapla community and I am a performer scholar. I am doing this uh, research in the Mapla part to Mapla performing arts. While I am searching into the deep, I found that so much of the missings because we have almost lost many of the songs. There is the importance of the Arnold Bake and also the Nazir Ali Jera's boy, and of course the work of the Ami Kathleen Jera's boy. I belong to a place, a coastal place known as Parapanangadi, and I don't know what was the state the Parapanangadi Kolkali team, what was the nature of the Kolkali performed by the Parapanangadi fishermen community in the 1930s. I'm searching for these materials, and luckily I find out that particular records from the records of the Arnold Barkey. So imagine a Parapanangadi research scholar can find out the recordings of Parapanangadi Kolkali from the records of the Arnold Barkey. So that much is relevant these all resources are. If you are really you wanted to study about your community, if you wanted to really study about the Malabar and its uh, ethnomusicological perspective, this uh, portion of the Bakke, we cannot uh, uh, forget. 
because that will provide you an insight into dig into the deep and because of the amica thing i watched that video of the kolkali performed by the parapenangadi team and we go through that transcription the diary of the adult bake and we able to relocate a marriage records that are recorded by the a local mosque in parapenangadi and in connection with that particular marriage they performed kolkali that was recorded by the arnold bake in the year of 1978 so our uh, the basic uh, vision and mission of our chair is to enhance your uh, uh, understanding about the malabar and make you to change the terrestrial way of understanding the world to the ocean way of understanding the world because we know that in the ocean a new trend in the field of academic community emerged as a academic discipline we have to look into that particular aspect so now we always say that indian ocean is not a water of separation but a symbol of connection so the the uh, the prime aim of our chair is to connect this memory and landscape and also along with the uh, indian ocean world so you can see that uh, some of the similarities in malabar maplapattinam and performing arts like kolkali all around the indian ocean region so this is our curious area to relocate the interconnection that almost neglected by these uh, scholars and the, those who are studying the uh, indian ocean landscape so uh, that much important these all resources are and luckily ami kathleen jeras boy our chair professor handed over all the material to our department some of the material uh, has there with in hand and some of the materials we can find out in the city libraries also so the purpose of all these talks and the next upcoming talks also to provide you a broad understanding about the malabar and its connection with the indian ocean world and of course the contribution made by the uh, arnold bake nasir ali jeras boy ami katrin jeras boy to repatriate the songs and emotion to the uh, land of malabar okay you have any further question you can definitely ask to the anchor Yes, Malabar is a very unique place, and the uniqueness of the Mapla community is unmistakable. What a tremendous history and what a wonderful, wonderful uh, heritage you have. You know, one song of Bacchus that 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 he recorded, I used as the seed for one film. It was a film about Southern Maharashtra, Northern Karnataka, about the goddess Renuka Yellamma. one song became over 2 hours film including all the bonus tracks called music for a goddess so if you take one mapla song perhaps you can expand it for into a, an entire film about the mapla community about mapla history mapla culture mapla literature the oral literature of the maplas is really remarkable really remarkable nothing like it anywhere else um, i mean closest i can think of are the koja the the, the koja ginans the the ginans are the songs of wisdom these are songs uh, of devotion and uh, and historical as well so some of them are you know uh, have historical references and tells tell us history that was otherwise lost such as the way that these songs began when the when the peer came from alavot and uh, began learning the hindu traditions and joining in the hindu garbi garba traditions and singing along with the garbas and gradually started singing lyrics that were about the peers and the and the uh, the the beliefs of the of the ismaili muslims and that's how conversions occurred after the garba was danced after hearing his songs they said that all of the brahmins took their threads and put them in the corner and burned them and became muslims so song is a powerful tool 
And you're very, very lucky to have such a powerful tool in your community. Yes, sir. And a vast repertoire of, of songs. Just incredible. But that also needs to be properly cataloged and categorized uh, and archived. The texts, the lyrics, performed so text. That is why, Abby, just let me add let me add one more thing. Because of your inspiration only, we had established one uh, uh, digital archives, the Malabar Digital Archives. So that connected with our uh, college websites also. I, I think you realize that I, I, I you that link already. So uh, that is an inspiration from yours and keeping these Mapla materials for the uh, coming upcoming generation. So my idea is archive for the future. So all the available Mapla songs we already digitalized. Oh, wonderful. That's great. So our uh, faculty member Fahad Ismail is there and he's also a research scholar from uh, uh, Hyderabad University. And he is also here. Fahad, you wanted to ask something? Is it Fahad? Yeah, hello, hello, ma'am. Okay. Fahad is mine. Fahad, Fahad is mine. Yeah, yeah, Fahad, Fahad. No, no, I am <clears throat> fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I don't want to ask anything because uh, I was listening to you clearly. I was I need to very <clears throat> informative and very enlightened talk. It was, I hope it was helpful for the students and the listening to you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for a wonderful uh, lecture. And I hope to see you soon in the campus. Bye. Yes, indeed. And I hope we have some more speakers uh, to broaden our horizons uh, on the Indian Ocean, to see yourselves in context, in the context of the whole Indian Ocean world, with the so-called Muslim Ocean, the Islamic Ocean. Yes, and that is a real term. <laughs> and I hope it will be, and, and this text about the, 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 the story, the tale of a thousand questions is something that is very relevant to you as well, because these questions, I'm sure, were not just spoken. They, had, if they were in court, they, they probably would have been recited. It wouldn't have been written out in prose. The book of a thousand questions, I'm sure, must have been a performed text, and I would like to know more about that. So if we get Ronit Ritchie here, we'll find out. Um, whether it's performed in Malaysia, in Java, or in, in Tamil Nadu, uh, in the Tamil version, uh, whether it's the Tamils of Malaysia, I'm not sure, but uh, these are the three translations that she worked on. I suppose they wouldn't have needed a, a translation in Malayalam because Arab, Arabic would be very easy to understand amongst the Mapla. So you might have a text of the, the the uh, Book of a Thousand Questions. Uh, have you ever heard of it before? Anyone? Well, now you have. And you can read all about it in the book, Translating Islam. Islam Translated by Roni Tritt. Yeah, I think, uh, Annie, you have that uh, a soft copy of Islam Translated and the uh, Thousand Questions. That book is you, you already sent it me though, right? I, I, already I, see that. I think I did. I, yeah, it came out. Uh, yeah, it did come out online. Uh, but the the actual Arabic story is is not in it. They give a reference. I think she gives a reference to the to the manuscript. But I even I had trouble finding that reference. So it's going to be a bit of a hunt, but I'm sure that you're capable of doing I'm not hunting for an Arabic text. If it's Tamil translation, you might have more luck finding the Tamil translation. That would be something of interest. 
the Jewish scholars of Cochin as well. When they hear about the rabbi who converts to his... Abdul Rauf, you wanted to ask something? Oh, yes. Let's have a question from Rauf. Are you ready? With a question or an observation or concern? Abdul Rauf, your microphone is off. I can't hear you. Yes. So. So any questions from other side also, you can directly ask to Amy, uh, your ideas and your uh, uh, ideas about this Mapula community, how we can improve the sustainability of Mapula by using software So if you have any concern, you can ask directly to Amy. Well, I have a concern, and that is that the, what about the, the role of commercial recordings of Mapula Padra as opposed to uh, natural, non-commercialized singers. Have you thought about that? There's quite a difference, I'm sure. When you record something yeah. and record it, you know, it changes from a natural setting to a different, non unnatural setting. I mean, it's a yeah, different yeah, I think I thought that because. Is a uh, social type of this cassette culture, you know, cassette culture. And for the way the CD culture was very prominent in Malabar. Because the other is we can see that two different types of Mapalapatu version. One is pure version of the Mapalapatu, like the Badr Padapatu, Uhud Padapatu, the songs written by the Mapala scholars like. Uh, 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 Unni Muhammad, Moin Kuti Vaidyan, and uh, uh, the recent uh, uh, Mapala Party scholars, they wrote a the different types of Mapala songs uh, in a complicated Arabic Malayalam language. And that typically we can see that the same, the way their writing, we can connect it with the same way the writings of the uh, old generation. Because old generation, what I mean that the generation of the uh, Moin Kuti Vaidyan. So that one parallel songwriting has been going on, the original Mapla Pato writing, and the cassette culture is primarily related to the uh, Mapla songs, that uh, uh, another version of the Mapla Pato. That's also known as Mapla songs, but that second category of the Mapla songs in a direct plain Malayalam language. Not in the Arabi Malayalam language, direct plain Malayalam language, especially describing the uh, beauty of the women related to love stories of the uh, uh, the present community. So, or, or something related to the political in nature, satirical in nature. So, these type of pure Malayalam type of songs are also prevalent among the Mapala community. Uh, that's also known as Mapala Patu, but the second category is more in the commercial aspects of the Mapala songs because uh, rather than the first category of the original Mapala composition, the second songs purely written in the form of the Malayalam, that songs uh, uh, gain more, I mean, the cassette culture, the CD culture, and also the commercialization of the Mapala Patu belongs to the second category. Hmm. Yes. Ah. And um, in these recordings, you have different techniques that are used that are that because you're singing to a microphone, you're not singing to a group of, of, of people. So it's, a, it's not a social context. You were singing as a soloist alone. And that social context is very important and something that can only be captured perhaps on video, but more naturally without any 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 recording equipment. That's the tricky thing, to get something that is really that captures that that quality of spontaneity and interaction, social interactions. Those are very important micro elements of performance, you know, 
who you look at and how you adjust your your stance. All the physical elements that don't come through on a recording. All you hear is the sound, more sound. So these are, that's where perform, the art of performance is much more than the singing sound. It's, it's a whole body experience. And it's a social experience of interaction. And some of the songs are extemporized as well, aren't they? They're not all memorized, so that they're improvised in a way. So that's a quality that's very precious. Has so, Rami, what about uh, the did you know what about album songs? Album songs? What? Album I songs. Was, because I told I'll, you. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you can go after that. I will. Mark? Mark, did you have a question? Did you say? Mark, do you have any question? He just left. Okay. So, yeah, he, he left because I, I think some internet trouble. So let me complete my question. So, Amy, I, I uh, uh, told you that the concept of album songs. Album song. Album song means, album song means the another category of the Mapla songs that was very much prominent for the last decades, almost from 2002, 2020, 2016 or 2020, 2017. The album song type of mapla songs played a very dominant role, especially the commercialization aspects of the maplas. So after the 2015, the relevance of these album songs began to be decreased, especially because of these uh, YouTube and everything, this cassette culture, CD culture of the commercialized aspects of the mapla community began to disappear. So I can uh, point it out that the album culture was there within the Mapla community in the last decade. Now it's relevant to completely lost. Mm. So we have to think about that album songs also as a category, subcategory of the Mapla party. But a continuous uh, debate has been going on among the Mapla scholars whether these album songs of Mapla type songs belongs to the original category of Mapla part or not. Somebody argued that the recent, uh, uh, I mean, writings of the Mapla songs don't fit into the exact term of the Mapla songs. So there's been a debate going on among the scholars. They do not want to treat this album song as a Mapla song category. So now its relevance is also uh, uh, diminishing. And more than that, a, a reversal of the fortune came into prominence because nowadays the people again wanted to go back to the old songs. And this old version of the songs with the new flavor and tunes, they make digitalized and cassette was available, CD was available. And that almost songs the sung by the new generation in a, a new rhythms and new uh, tunes and they upload it to the YouTube and they become much popularity than so they are comparing with this album songs. So this reversal also happening because of this internet penetration. So uh, I can see that uh, the original version of the Mapla Patu began to be strengthened because of this internet penetration than before. Interesting. Very interesting. So the the eels, uh, the um, the um, the musical rhythms. I mean, you have a special way of categorizing the melodies and the rhythms called ishos or the. So uh, those are the traditional way of singing, I suppose. Yeah. Not quite like ragas, ragams. Not like rags. A different way of categorizing oh, the music musical theory is is different for Mapla Pato than other types of yes. songs. Yes. And, uh, Mark, please go ahead. 
So sorry, I was uh, facing some connectivity issues. Um, so, um, and I'm really happy that now we're talking about issues because uh, I'm uh, I'm pursuing my PhD now, uh, and uh, I want to focus on things like issues and the musical theory uh, in uh, in Mapla Pata. I mean, as well as other performance theory. So, uh, but my question was about um, about the the the, Bake, uh, the Baker recordings. Um, I had noticed that he did not uh, include any of the Jewish Malayalam songs. Ah. And I was and I was wondering what the reason might have been. And is it is it because? Uh, I'm sorry, excuse, excuse the barking of the store. Um, but uh, is it because uh, he was focused on religious music? Is, is, is that the reason? We, we don't really know because you know what happened during that period because of the war going on. His diary, which took the form of letters that he wrote home, sent home so that they could be kept safe in home. <laughs> Well, he, the, the, you know, the mail got disrupted, so we don't have his notes. We don't know what happened. We presume that he wasn't he wasn't able to get introductions to the to the so-called uh, to the you know the other Jews, the the black Jews they call them or whatever, uh, the mainland Jews instead of the Cochin Jews. So, uh, but. There's some beautiful recordings that were recently published. I don't know if you've seen this two CD set called The Voice of the Kitchen or something like that. The Parrot? Uh, it's uh, oh, oh Lovely Parrot by Barbara yes. Johnson. Oh, and yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, you know about that already. Okay. Yeah, that is, that is in Malayalam. But very beautifully done, but very recently done. Yeah, I think that, that's that, that's that, that's that's the. I mean, that just shows how priceless those Barker recordings are. Because even in the even in Oh Lovely Parrot, these are relatively newer recordings from the seventies. The oldest one is from the seventies, and um, a lot I think was lost um, from the from the time that the Jews left India to to that time. Yes. You're already in, into the next generation by, by then. Yes. Uh, but uh, I, I, I would love to to to, to discuss uh, issues, or if I, I don't know if that's in the scope of this discussion, but um, if, if any, I mean, I, I think I missed a lot. So maybe I'll, we can have another discussion, maybe with Haseeb or, or with you. Yeah, so next week while you are giving a lecture in the, our college, we can discuss about this concept of issue. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. You're giving a lecture next week, Mark? Um, I, either next week or sometime this month for sure. On the subject of what? Uh, just, just, just going over my my master's research. On, on the Jews specifically. I also did some work on the on the Mapla recordings, but uh, that I'm kind of still working on in my PhD. Good. Great. Well, very interesting. Yes. We, we went back to Cochin and repatriated the recordings there too, but there were like only 10 people left and we met several and they recognized the, the voices that Baco recorded and confirmed the names when there were names. It was very gratifying really to uh, meet them and hear their work, comments. It's all in our diaries somewhere if you want to see. And that, uh, those, di those diaries are being, that part has been done. They've been digitized and they've been, they will be available online. Uh, as I said early next year, they say. But, uh, I, I have them. <laughs> you have you have them already? Oh, at the ARC. Because, of yeah. Of course, of course. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Well, there's there's more than that. I don't think we could really copy everything. 
but I've, I've been very thorough. I'm doing the cataloging, actually, so I know, you know, where to find stuff, and it's all in one room here, and uh, I know what connects to what, so it's, it's, it's much better for me to be involved in that whole process. So you might find some interesting tidbits. It's very interesting for me to go through those those times because I it's 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 like just yesterday that it happened it seemed 1984 because every day was so unique and fascinating and the part in Kerala was just unbelievable you know we, got, we kind of got roped into or we were invited to film a festival at Kaliaseri. Uh, oh yeah, three days and nights, long nights. And uh, we've been trying to catalog that, and of course we need, we need local people. I met one student last week who's just come from, from northern Kerala, and he's very familiar with the material. So she's studying dance therapy, I think, here. So I hope that she gets back in touch with me. So we can complete those notes. Yes, yes. That's great. So any other concerns or maybe please otherwise we can end this session. And as Amy rightly pointed out that this is actually the second talk of our series. Nine scholars are on the queue. So uh, after that, we get uh, a second letter from their side. We will arrange the upcoming series of talks uh, this month or so the next month. That is for sure. And our idea is all about to make you understanding and awareness about the recordings of Bhakti Jara's voice and also the Indian Ocean Poet. Yes. So, I Ari, anything you want to add? I just, I just encourage you all to do, to, to do the readings and, and let me know if you have any trouble getting access to the to the to the book, uh, which I think was put online. Uh, and I know that the that the um, yeah the um, songs of wisdom that one has been put online. So you can read it. Uh, and the Ismaili community, as I said, is very interested in, in working together. In fact, they're having a conference on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th of November about Ginans at the Institute for Ismaili Studies. And so, uh, yeah, that will be in London. But uh, I might be on my way to India at that time. Who knows? Let's hope. Let's see. I hope you're all keeping safe and healthy and getting lots of work done thanks to the restraints on your free time <laughs> or time to study. Are you asking something? I wasn't asking anything. I'm just hoping that you have plenty of time to study now. Okay. Yeah. So we can move to the last session. We can wrap up the session now. I hope. Yes. No questions further. So. Uh, Abdul Rauf, are you able to hear me? Oh, I'd like to Abdurrahu, meet Abdul Rauf. wanted to ask. He's been very helpful for this whole process, mm -hmm. and I wanted to thank him. Yeah. And, and see his face. Where is he? Is he he's actually muted. His mic is not working, and his profile is not also not his profile. Oh, oh that's it. Well, thank you, Abdul Rauf. So I think some network connection. Thank you for your help. So Please. on behalf of this, we are doing, yeah. 
I definitely convey your thanks to Rao, uh, dear Annie. So on behalf of this gathering, uh, thank you very much. And uh, my uh, great thanks to my dear Ami, uh, and who is so inspiration for everybody uh, around TSMA College and beyond uh, for research and all these study of the Mapala community, Mapala Patu and everything. So I hope uh, all assistance and guidance from your side uh, for completing our project in a successful manner. So this is only the second talk. We will hope more. Uh, we will hope to meet more scholars for the coming days. And I'm thanking you, uh, Ami, for your wonderful lecture series and uh, a good insight to our students to think about uh, further. And uh, I'm thankful to Mark. Uh, very, uh, your contribution is very grateful to these uh, one and a half hour. Uh, uh, lecture series, and I will meet you soon on the campus in person. So I'm thankful to Dr. Rahul, I'm thankful to Principal, and I'm also thankful to the uh, Chair, of, I mean the Chair Director, uh, MK Haji Chair for Migration Studies, Dr. Shibinu, and I'm thankful to all of you for your wonderful cooperation. And definitely, uh, this is promised from my side and our Chair Professor Ami side. We will keep you motivated and we will keep in touch with you and we will try our level best to connect your memories and your thoughts with the scholars around the world. Thank you. Thank you once again. Let me wrap up this session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mahamad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Goodbye. I'll see you, Ami. I'll see you. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Good office.